Hello everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. It is the first video of polygons and I would like to introduce you to triangles. Um, but triangles will be consisting of a few videos such as lecture and solving problems. In lecture section I am going to give you more than 25 theorems. I mean that all videos will be including in these videos. And after that we will put our knowledge into practice. Now it's time to step into world of geometry. Enjoy it. Let's get started. In this part, I would like to start by giving you a definition of triangle. So, first, we need three non-collinear points. What is the meaning of non-collinear? They are not on the same line. Look at uh, sides A, B, and C. They are also vertex point of a triangle. When we combine point A, B, and C, we are going to get triangle. Okay. And B, C, A, C, and A, B, here, sides of a triangle. They are line segments. And also, in triangle, there are three regions. When we take plane as a E, so here we have three regions, interior, exterior, and on a triangle. So, for example, the point K is interior point of a triangle, point L is exterior point of a triangle, and the point M is on a triangle. So, let me summarize in such a way. The plane E is equal to interior of a triangle ABC union triangle ABC union exterior of a triangle ABC in this section you can see types of triangle and we can arrange in six groups look at the first one triangle ABC all sides different from each other four five and six it is called scalene triangle triangle DEF all sides are equal and automatically the interior major will be 60 degrees so the type of the triangle is equilateral the next triangle KLM just two sides are equal KL and KM the type of the triangle is isosceles when you look at the next triangle all interior majors are less than 90 degrees so it is called acute triangle and triangle PRQ just one interior major is 90 degrees so it is called right triangle and when we look at the last triangle XYZ just one interior major is greater than 90 degrees and less than 180 degrees which type of triangle it is called obtuse triangle okay so in theorem 1 we are going to discuss about interior major and the exterior major of a triangle an angle A, B, and C, interior A1, B1, and C1, exterior major of a triangle. When we take sum of interior majors, such as angle A, angle B, and angle C, we are going to get 180. Angle A and its supplements, angle B and its supplements, angle C and its supplement major will be 180 degrees. And we can say the sum of exterior major of a triangle, which happens to be 300 60 degrees okay in theorem 2 there is a relationship between interior majors of a triangle and size of a triangle we can compare size of a triangle according to interior majors look at the triangle ABC interior majors angle A 67 angle B 57 and angle C, angle C is 56 degrees so which angle is the biggest one angle A after that comes the measure of angle B and comes the measure of angle C. The largest, the biggest angle is angle A. So when we compare the sides, side A is greater than side B is greater than side C. So let me summarize it. If one angle of a triangle is larger than the other, then the side opposite the larger angle is longer than the side opposite the smaller angle and vice versa. Okay, the next theorem is 3.1 and 3.2. In 3.1, I'm going to teach you triangle inequality theorem. So we can say, in a triangle, the length of one side is greater than the difference of the lengths of the other two sides and less than the sum of the lengths of the other two sides. So side A is between absolute value B minus C and B plus C. Side B is between absolute value A minus C and A plus C. And side C is between absolute value A minus B and A plus B. And in theorem 3.2, 
according to interior measure, we can compare the size. I told you this before, remember. So if the measure of angle A is equal to 90 degrees, then root of B squared plus C squared is equal to A is less than B plus C. If the measure of angle A is less than 90 degrees, side A is between absolute value B minus C and root of B squared plus C squared. If the measure of angle A is greater than 90 degrees, then side A is less than B plus C, greater than root of B squared plus C squared. But, teacher, it's very difficult. How can I memorize? You don't need to memorize. Write somewhere, and when you enter the test, you can copy it. Okay, theorem 4 is about congruent triangles. If the corresponding angles and the corresponding sides of two triangles are congruent, then these triangles are called congruent triangles. I mean that triangle ABC and DEF, they are congruent triangles because their corresponding angles are equal. The measure of angle A is congruent the measure of angle D, the measure of angle B and the measure of angle E, and the measure of angle C and the measure of angle F, they are congruent angles. And also corresponding sides are equal. Side A is equal to side D, side B is equal to side E, side C is equal to side F. So we can say triangle ABC is congruent, triangle DEF. It is our symbol to show congruent triangles. Okay, theorem 5 is related to similar triangles. Triangle ABC and KLM similar because we have some reasons. The corresponding angles are equal. The measure of angle A is equal to the measure of angle K. The measure of angle B is equal to the measure of angle L. And the measure of angle C is congruent to the measure of angle M. The corresponding angles are equal, but the length of the sides are different. Their ratios are equal. So in this case, the triangles will be similar triangles. So the sides A and side K is equal to side B over side L is equal to side C over side M. So we can say triangle ABC similar triangle KLM and it's our symbol to show similar triangles okay in this part uh, I'm going to talk about special triangles the first is 45 degrees 90 degrees and 45 degrees it's isosceles so the legs are equal because the interior measures are equal 45 45 and 90 so hypotenuse is root of 2 times greater than legs so if legs are a hypotenuse will be a the root of 2 look at the example to understand better just here is 4 is given 45 90 and the sum of interior measures of a triangle is 180 so it must be also 45 degrees and x is 4 because this triangle is isosceles triangle so what is the length of the hypotenuse root of 2 times greater than x so y will be automatically for the root of 2 look at the next example here just is hypotenuse given and the sides are equal let's say the sides are a so when we multiply sides by root of 2 we are going to get hypotenuse it's 8 so what is a we will divide both sides by root of 2 cancels each other out so a will be 8 over the root of 2 the second special triangle is 30 degrees 60 degrees and 90 degrees here is uh, first we have to define which side is longer than the other so in triangle inequality theorem remember and corresponding largest uh, angle goes the biggest side so this side must be is uh, longer side because it comes from 60 degrees and this side is the smaller one and this side is called hypotenuse because it comes from 90 degrees so here is we can say the hypotenuse is twice as long as the shorter leg if short shorter leg is a hypotenuse will be two times greater than and the longer leg is dropped three times as long as the shorter leg so the longer leg will be a the root of 3 an example here just hypotenuse is given it is 60 degrees 90 degrees so it should be uh, 30 degrees right okay 
We know that the side in front of 30 degrees half of the hypotenuse. So x will be 8 through the 3 over 2, which means 4 through the 3. And how can you find the length of y? We have to multiply root of 3. So 4 through the 3, we found this. If we will multiply 4 root of 3 by root of 3, which happens to be 4 times root of 3 times root of 3, root of 9. And what is root of 9? 3. So it must be 12. Okay. Uh, the next theorem is called Euclidean theorem. In a right triangle, the altitude to the hypotenuse form two similar right triangles, such as triangle AHB and AHC, which is also similar to the original triangle, triangle ABC. So in this case, we can use Euclidean theorem, but here is side AH is congruent side of BC. So, B square is equal to Q times Q plus P, C square is equal to P times P plus Q, and A square is equal to P times Q. Uh, the next theorem is called Euclidean theorem. In a right triangle, the altitude to the hypotenuse form two similar right triangles, such as triangle AHB and AHC, which is also similar to the original triangle, triangle ABC. So in this case, we can use Euclidean theorem, but here is side AH is congruent side of BC. So B square is equal to Q times Q plus P, C square is equal to P times P plus Q, and A square is equal to P times Q. Okay, after including, we are going to continue with median theorem. In a triangle, a line segment whose endpoints are a vertex and the midpoint of the side opposite, the vertex is called a median of the triangle. We use the capital letter V to indicate the length of the median. So the medians divides the sides into two equal parts. And we have another two medians, median B and median C. And also, they divide the sides AB and AC into two equal parts, respectively. The intersection point of medians is called centroid of a triangle. And there are another three theorems in this field. The first is AG is equal to 2 times greater than GL, BG is equal to 2 times GK, and CG is equal to 2 times GM. The another theorem says a square plus b square is equal to 2v square plus c square. Uh, let me write this. It's a over 2. It's a over 2. It's b over 2. And it's b over 2. c over 2. And c over 2 as well. So, and I will take beginning. Uh, a square plus b square is equal to 2v square plus c square over 2. b square plus c square is equal to 2v a square plus a square over 2 and a square plus c square is equal to 2v b square plus b square over 2. If we will add line up, we are going to get 3 times a square plus b square plus c square is equal to 4 times v a square plus v b square plus v c square. Let's go for the next theorem. Okay, theorem 9 is angle bisector. An angle bisector of a triangle is a line segment which bisects an angle of the triangle and which has an endpoint on the side opposite the angle. And here the measure of angle BAN and the measure of angle CAN, they are equal because of angle uh, bisector. If we will take angle bisector B and C, their intersection point will be in center of a triangle and the circle is called inscribed circle. Okay, we haven't finished angle bisector theorem yet. So in this part, I am planning to give you the ratio of angle bisector. So, and here we say C over P is equal to B over Q. And also, we can find the length of the angle bisector A. To find this, we use A n square is equal to P times Q minus B times C. Also, we have a theorem for exterior angle bisector k over k plus a is equal to b over c to find length of an 
a n square is equal to a plus k times k minus b times c. Theorem 11. Uh, triangle A, B, C. When we extend the lines here from A and C, uh, we can use here exterior angle bisector uh, like A and C. Their intersection point is called X center of a triangle. The name of the circle is called a scribed circle. Theorem 12. In a triangle, the length of an altitude is called a height of a triangle. So AH is per perpendicular BC. So here, if we will take the other heights such as B and C, their intersection point will be ortho center of a triangle. So we can say the point O is ortho center of a triangle. Theorem 13. In a triangle, the measure of the angle formed by the altitude and the angle bisector which both extend from the same vertex is equal to the half, the absolute value of the difference of the other two angles of the triangle. So AN is angle bisector and HA is altitude of a triangle. So we say X is equal to absolute value, the measure of angle B minus the measure of angle C over 2. And in theorem 14, the measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the two remote interior angles. So, when we extend the line segment BN, the measure of angle N, K and C will be A plus B and the measure of angle B and C will be A plus B plus C because we know that when we take the sum of two interior measure, we will get one remote exterior. So the measure of N, K, C is A plus B and the sum of interior measures A plus B and C we will get another remote exterior measure. So the measure of angle B and C is A plus B plus C. Here if the measure of angle B is greater than the measure of angle C we can compare the length of the height, angle bisector and median. So when we compare median is greater than angle bisector is greater than height. So the biggest length will be median and the smallest one is height of a triangle. Okay, theorem 16, triangle mid-segment theorem. In triangle ABC, point E and F, midpoints of line segment AB and AC respectively. So AE is equal to EB and AF is equal to FC. So the length of the mid segment, half of the BC. In theorem 17, OC is angle bisector and F is any point on OC. When we draw line segment from F to OB and OA, we are going to get perpendicular. So we say FH is perpendicular OB and FN is perpendicular OA. So HF is equal to FN and OH is equal to ON. So here is OF is a common site. So we say triangle OFH is congruent. Triangle OF and N. Okay, theorem 18 divided into a fifth sections. Uh, on the first uh, section, there are five special theorems. The first one is, for any isosceles triangle, AB is equal to AC. The height of the triangle is also angle bisector and median of a triangle. And the length of the angle bisector B is equal to the length of the angle bisector C. The length of height B is equal to the length of height C and the length of median B is equal to the length of median C. For equilateral triangle they are all equal. For any isosceles triangle we have some special conditions such as P is element of BC, D is element of AB and E is element of AC means that P, E and D they are points on the sides BC 
AC and AB respectively and PE is parallel AB and PD is parallel AC in this case we say that the sum of PE and PD will give us the length of AB and AC if PE is X and PD is represented by uh, Y X plus Y is equal to AB plus AC and for equilateral the sum of PE and PD will give us AB, AC and BC for the next special um, case it is the last one of the section uh, for isosceles because AB is equal to AC and the sum of PH and PD will give us the length of HB and HC so the length of HB and AC is equal to X plus Y and in this section there are another three special theorems uh, these theorems are for equilateral triangles and look at the first one and here is PH is perpendicular AC and PD is perpendicular AB so the sum of PH plus PD will give us the length of AB, AC and BC for the next is PF is parallel BC PE is parallel AB and PD is parallel AC so in this case we say the sum of PE, PF and PD will give us AB, AC and BC if PE is represented by X BF is represented by Y and PD is represented by Z and X plus Y plus Z is going to be AB, AC and BC for the last one as long as equilateral triangle so PF, PD and PE they are perpendicular to side BC AC and AB respectively and P is interior point of triangle ABC which means P is element of interior triangle ABC so we can say that the sum of PD plus PE and PF will give us the height of the triangle ABC which means HA Theorem 19 is going to be Carnot's theorem here is ABC is triangle and P is interior point of triangle ABC and PN, PK and PT perpendiculars to sides AC, BC and AB respectively so we say AT square plus BK square plus CN square is equal to AN square plus BT square plus CK square for the next theorem um, it is Menelaus theorem so we say triangle ABC and if a line D intersects the two sides AB and AC and the extension of the third side BC of triangle ABC at points RS and P respectively so we say PB over PC times CS over SA times AR over RB is equal to 1 okay in this period I am going to show you another two special theorems such as Sevas and Stevas theorem um, if the lines intersect the sides BC AC and AB at points K, N and T respectively we say BK over KC times CN over NA times AT over TB is equal to 1 for the next theorem we can use for any triangles and uh, in this part we can find the length of AD which means D uh, D squared is equal to B squared times P plus C squared times Q over P plus Q minus P times Q okay 
So let's look at the next theorems. What are we waiting for? Okay, in theorem 23, uh, as long as A, B, E, F, and D, C parallel to each other, 1 over E, F is equal to 1 over A, B plus 1 over C, T, and B, F times C, D is equal to F, C times A, B. For theorem 24, it is Pythagorean theorem, and, uh, and I hope you know this. Uh, it is very basic theorem in uh, geometry, but uh, speaking geometrically, uh, we say a square is equal to uh, b square plus c square. We can use Pythagorean theorems for uh, just right triangles. In theorem 25, I'm going to explain area of triangle. Look at the first one, and there are three heights, B, E, C, F, and A, D. And, um, so it means that there are three different ways to find area of triangle. And by using A, D times B, C over 2, B, E times A, C over 2, and C, F times A, B over 2. In general, to find area of a triangle, half of the product of base and height. For the second, we can find area of A, B, E, and C. All you need to do is um, multiply X and Y and divide by 2. For the next is uh, relative to equilateral triangles, 60 degrees, 60 degrees, and 60 degrees. Remember, uh, all interior majors are equal and all sides are also equal. So to find area, of triangle ABC, I forgot to write vertex. Okay. And if one side of a triangle is A, the area of ABC will be A squared root of 3 over 4. For triangle 30 degrees, 30 degrees, and 120 degrees, uh, it's actually isosceles because. Uh, there are two equal interior majors, such as 30 degrees. So AB and AC, they are equal to each other. Um, the side is represented by A. And the longer side is A to root of 3. Uh, to find area of ABC, uh, we are taking square root of A, uh, root of 3 over 4. Okay, we can continue with uh, 5 and 6. So we can analyze triangle ABD. Uh, first, we can start with triangle ABC and ACD. Uh, triangle ABC and ACD, they have a different bases, X and Y, but they have common height. So when we find a ratio of areas, to find area of ABC, base times height over 2, which means x times h over 2 and for area ACD y times h over 2 h over 2 and h over 2 cancels each other so the ratio of areas will be x over y for the next uh, section triangle ABC and BDC they share common base but they have different heights so to find area of triangle ABC, I will write BC times H1 over 2. Uh, to find area of BDC, I'm going to use BC times H2, H2 over 2. BC over 2 and BC over 2, we can simplify. So we are going to get just H1 over H2. Okay, for the seventh one, to find area of a triangle, we can use sine theorem. So, we are going to enter trigonometry automatically. The interior majors are given, alpha, beta, and tet, and the sides A, B, and C. To find area of A, B, C, there are three different ways. Uh, 1 over 2 times B times C times between side B and C, we have measure alpha sine alpha is equal to 1 over 2 times if you are going to use side A and B take the difference between the sides uh, what is angle here is tet sine tet 
is equal to 1 over 2 times a times c times sine beta. Uh, for the next uh, theorem says ACB and AB is equal to C and intermeasure alpha is given ADE and AE is D so we can find a ratio of area of triangle ADE and area of triangle ABC uh, to find this of course I'm going to apply sine theorem so to find area of ADE will be 1 over 2 times E times D times sine alpha to find area of ABC 1 over 2 times sine of AB and AC B times C times sine alpha as well 1 over 2 times sine alpha they cancels each other out so which happens to be E times D over B times C Okay, for the ninth one, um, triangle ABC is the largest triangle and DEF triangle is inside of the large triangle ABC and the sides are given X, Y, Z, T, P and R. We can find a ratio of them. How can you find this? I will take product of X, Z and P. plus y t and r over I will take product of sides a b and c and for the next triangle a b c given just we know sides and we don't have any information about interior measures so how can I find here the area we are going to use u u is half of the sum of lengths so u will be here a plus b plus c over 2 to find area of a b c we will go root of u times u minus a times u minus b times u minus c okay uh, the 11 is about circumscribed circle or circumcircle of a polygon is a circle that passes through all the vertices of the polygon and here we have a triangle the center of the circle is called the circumcenter and its radius is called the circumradius and in this case we can find the area of triangle ABC it will be A times B times C over 4R okay for the next S in triangle ABC if P is interior point of a triangle and BP P, C, X and Y respectively we can compare the sum of P, B and P, C as X plus Y so X plus Y is greater than A and less than B plus C for 13 X plus Y plus Z is between half of the perimeter of this triangle and perimeter of a triangle which is A plus B plus C over 2 is less than X plus Y plus Z is less than A plus B plus C Okay, finally we came theorem 26. It is the last theorem. And I told you at the beginning of the video that we are going to have more than 25 uh, theorems. Before end up my video, I would like to share with you theorem 26. So you can benefit from this theorem every time and everywhere. The theorem 26 says to get success, study hard. Okay, everybody, keep in touch. See you in my next videos. And don't forget to subscribe and like my videos. Bye-bye.